Hello, and welcome everyone to our webinar that's offered jointly by the Mobilize Center and Restore Centers at Stanford University. My name is Matt Petrucci. I'm the Scientific Program Manager of both these centers, and I'm excited to be your moderator today. Today's speakers are Scott Ulrich and Antoine Felice, who will be presenting OpenCap, a freely available cloud-based tool that measures human movement using smartphone videos. The first part of the webinar will cover their validation of OpenCap, and in the second part, they will share how they how to set up a data collection, access kinematic measures, generate dynamic simu simulations, and understand the strengths and limitations of OpenCAP. Today's webinar series is brought to you by the Mobilize Center and Restore Center, which are both supported by the National Institutes of Health. The Mobilize Center is focused on developing and disseminating state-of-the-art biomechanics and machine learning tools for researchers to analyze human movement. The Restore Center is working to make these and other tools for real-world assessment of movement more widely available to the re rehab research community. Before we get started, a couple quick reminders about the format of the webinar. Uh, we'll have a research talk, and then we'll have a tutorial, and we'd love to take questions from both. So we'll take your questions at the end of the research talk and at the end of the, of the tutorial section. Please type your questions into the Q&A panel in Zoom and not the chat, and we'll review them from there. So now I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, Dr. Scott Ulrich is the Director of Research in the St Stanford Human Performance Lab. He combines experimental techniques, biomechanical modeling, and machine learning to develop tools for preventing injury, uh, improving the efficacy of rehabilitation, and maximizing mobility for individuals with diseases like osteoarthritis. He has designed and patented numerous rehabilitation tools and has investigated their efficacy in clinical trials. He also developed tools for measuring human movement with commodity sensors like a cell phone camera, facilitating clinically actionable measurements to be made in the clinic, at home, or on the field. Uh, Scott received his PhD from Stanford University, where he designed and evaluated several gait modifications to reduce joint loading for individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Dr. Antoine Felice is a postdoctoral fellow in bioengineering here at Stanford University, working on computational approaches to study human movement disorders. Primarily uses optimization methods, machine learning, biomechanical modeling, and data from various sources, such as wearables, videos, or medical images, to get insights into movement abnormalities and improve treatments and rehabilitation protocols. Antoine received his PhD from KU Leuven, where he worked on modeling and simulating the loc locomotion of children with cerebral palsy. Uh, with that, we are all excited to have all of you here today. I know we're all excited to hear what Scott and Antoine have to present, so I'll let them go ahead and begin. Okay. All right, thanks, Matt, for the intro, and thanks very much, everyone, for being with us today. We're excited to be here to chat about OpenCAP. So as Matt said, the first part of the webinar will be a um, presentation about the, the research part of OpenCAP. So many biomechanists spend thousands of hours collecting and simulating motion capture data. The difficulty of this process limits the scale of research studies that we can conduct and hinders clinical translation. So today I'll share with you a tool that my colleagues at Stanford and I developed. Uh, it is called OpenCAP and the goal is to uh, address this problem by estimating musculoskeletal dynamics using video from two smartphones. Right. So in the motion capture lab, we can estimate kinematic and kinetic measures like joint angles and moments. We can also generate a muscle driven simulation to estimate things like muscle force or joint loads. These measures are insightful, but the process is resource intensive. So the equipment used in the lab cost around $150,000 and collecting, processing and simulating data can take an expert hours to several days. So for biomechanical measures to inform clinical practice and large scale research studies, we need tools that are as accurate and informative as motion capture but much faster and more scalable. So several simple tools exist for accurately measuring kinematic data like joint angles. For instance, we have inertial measurement units or commercial markerless motion capture systems 
that can measure joint angles with about five degrees of error. Another potentially very scalable motion capture technique could be using open source pose estimation algorithms on videos collected with smartphones to estimate key points on the human body, such as the position of joints. So these key points have been used as input to deep learning models to predict some fast specific biomechanical quantities. However, this approach isn't generalizable enough to replicate the motion capture lab. So this motivated us to develop OpenCap, which is a generalizable tool to estimate 3D human movement kinematics and dynamics from smartphone video. So here is a short video that describes how OpenCap works. So all you need is at least two iOS devices, it can be iPhones, iPads, iPods. You mount them to tripods, then you print a checkerboard using a regular printer, and you need a third connected device like a tablet or a laptop to run a web application. Once you have set up your um, environment, you can connect to the web application and start a new open cap session. You will get a QR code that you can scan from uh, the iOS application that you installed on your iOS devices. This will pair the phones to the web application. From that point, you will be able to control the phones from the web application. The next step is to calibrate the cameras. This is why you need the checkerboard. All this is automated, so you just need to hit calibrate. Once done, you will be asked to enter some details about the participant. What is the height? What is the weight? And then you ask the participant to take a standing neutral pose. This is used to scale a musculoskeletal model. Once this is done, you can start collecting dynamic trials. For instance, you may want to ask your participant to uh, start running. And as soon as you stop recording, the videos are sent to the cloud, they're processed, and you'll be able to visualize the 3D joint kinematics in the web application after a minute or so. You can do that with every um, movement you're interested in. So here is a cut, and in a similar way, you can visualize the movements. So OpenCap is using OpenSim, which is a simulation and, and modeling uh, platform. So you can also visualize the data in OpenSim. So here you had the run, now you have to cut. But the big innovation of OpenCap is that we go beyond kinematics. We also estimate dynamic quantities. So here we're running muscle-driven dynamic simulations to estimate the uh, dynamics of human movement. So for instance, you see the ground reaction forces with the green arrows. You see the muscles turning red when they're active. And from this dynamic simulation, you can also extract uh, dynamic quantities like tendon strains, the joint torques, or the joint loads. So this is how OpenCap um, goes from smartphone videos to uh, kinematics and dynamics. So in this presentation, we'll have three different parts. First, we'll go a little bit deeper into how OpenCap works. We'll then present some of our validation results. And finally, we'll go over some of the applications uh, we've been looking at. So let's look at the components of the OpenCap platform. We have um, a mobile application that enables simultaneous video capture. We have a lightweight web application that guides the users through data collection and visualization. And all of the processing happens using scalable cloud computing. So all of these components meet Stanford University and HIPAA data privacy and security requirements. So in this scalable computing box, we have four different steps. The first step is running an open source pose estimation algorithm like OpenPose to identify the position of key points on the human body. We then triangulate these key points to get the uh, 3D position of the video key points. These are the blue dots you can see here. However, this marker set is insufficient for accurate biomechanical analysis. So we train the machine learning model to augment this marker set to the one seen in red here. We then use OpenSim to run inverse kinematics and estimate joint angles. Finally, also using OpenSim, we generate muscle-driven simulations to estimate dynamic measures like joint loads, run rack and forces, and muscle forces. So let's talk about validation now. We have a validated open cap with two cameras against uh, marker-based motion capture and force plate analysis 
in a cohort of uh, 10 individuals, healthy individuals, performing four different types of activities. We had them doing some squats, sit to stands, uh, walking and drop jumps. So open cap had a 4.8 degree error compared to motion capture, which is uh, similar to IMUs and commercial markerless systems. Open cap ground reaction forces during walking, which you can see in red, were very similar to force plates in gray. And the errors in these forces and joint moments were similar to IMU-based approach. So after this general validation, we wanted to see if open cap was accurate enough for research and clinical application. And Scott is gonna talk about that in the rest of this presentation. Great. So we had four different applications that we looked at and we'll highlight two of them in the talk here. And the first one is knee osteoarthritis. So we, we looked at estimating measures of knee loading, the knee adduction and medial knee contact force that you can see on this figure, which relate to osteoarthritis progression. Our participants walk naturally and with a trunk sway gait modification, which typically alters these loading measures. So here you can see how accurately OpenCap estimated the first peak knee adduction moment. The ground truth values are on the X and OpenCap on the Y. We had an R squared of 0.8 and a mean absolute error of 0.3% body weight height, which is less than a range of clinically relevant thresholds from 0.5 to 2.2% body weight height, which suggests that OpenCap may be accurate enough to identify individuals with a high knee adduction moment who would be at risk of rapid disease progression. Next, we found that OpenCap could detect the average reductions in both of these different loading measures that are induced by a gait modification. And this had similar statistical power to what you would get from a motion capture experiment. It even accurately identified the one individual who increased their loading from a gait modification. Together, these indicate that OpenCap could be used to study between condition differences in a research setting and potentially personalized rehabilitation interventions in a clinical setting. Next, we evaluated whether OpenCap could detect asymmetries in muscle activation, which was a more measurable surrogate for force in this particular case, that often persist after knee surgery. Our participants squatted naturally, and then we instructed them to squat asymmetrically by reducing the force under their left foot. And we would expect this asymmetric condition to reduce the force generated by that left, the left quadriceps. Here you can see the difference in left quadriceps activation between the natural in gray and the asymmetric in red squat. This is again for the left leg. Open cap on the right detected a similar reduction as we measured with electromyography on the left. We can assess how accurately open cap can classify an asymmetric squat as defined with electromyography and see that the area under the receiver operator curve is similar to the result that you would get using motion capture and force weights. Finally, we wanted to explore how useful OpenCap is for out-of-lab data collections. A clinician without motion capture experience collected data on 100 individuals across the Stanford campus performing these natural and asymmetric squats. In total, it took her 10 hours to collect the data. OpenCap identified asymmetries in the knee extension moment with 85% accuracy and between condition changes in symmetry with 89% accuracy. And this suggests that it could be used to track rehabilitation status and progress. What was perhaps most exciting was that it only took five minutes per person for both data collection and the automated processing, which is about 25 times faster than the same analysis would take in the lab. And assuming you had to buy new devices, the whole setup was over 200 times less expensive than a motion capture lab. However, if you have access to iPhones or iPads, all of the additional equipment only costs $50. We released OpenCap about three months ago, and it's been exciting to see the types of studies people are conducting that didn't seem to, to be feasible before. As we expected, biomechanists are using it to accelerate their in-lab data collections, but also to capture activities that were challenging in the lab, like here, a study of accelerative sprinting taking place outside on a track. The five minute collection times seem to be within the scope of what can be done in a physical therapy visit. So we've seen quite a few clinician researchers using it to study conditions like a neuromuscular condition in this particular case. 
And finally, researchers that didn't used to have access to motion capture have been attracted to the low cost and commodity hardware. For example, here our radiology collaborators are estimating joint loading just outside of the MRI scan suite. They've always wanted to do this type of study, but the motion lab was across campus, so they haven't been able to. To close, OpenCAP enables large scale studies of movement that are powered to detect rare events like injuries. It will also be, uh, also enable more representative study samples. Biomechanics research is biased towards individuals with the resources, time, and proximity to visit an academic gate lab, and removing the dependence on the lab should help solve this problem. In parallel, we can start translating higher fidelity movement biomarkers into clinical practice with applications in disease screening and prescribing personalized rehab interventions. So like I said, OpenCAP is freely available for academic research. You can find instructions on how to start collecting data and find a preprint to our manuscript on the website, opencap.ai. I'd like to, to thank all of our funding sources, the Mobilize and Restore Centers funded through the NIH, as well as the WUSAI Human Performance Lab, the Human Performance Alliance. And we'll pause at this point to take questions on the research portion. Hey, great. Thanks, Scott and Antoine, for a super clear talk. Uh, now we'll go ahead and start the Q&A session. Uh, we're going to take about three minutes. We want to start the tutorial at 920, and then we'll continue to answer questions after that. Um, so again, if you have any questions, put them into the Q&A panel and not the chat, and we'll review them from there. Uh, first question came in from Jonathan Gustaf Gustafson. Uh, does OpenCAP allow you to visualize your field of view and capture space in real time? And also, any insights into the use of older gen iPhones versus newer iPhones uh, with much improved cameras in terms of how it affects the accuracy of the automated framework? Sure. So you can you can visualize the 2D field of view on the on the iPhone, and we'll have some instructions in the next part about how to do that. You don't get a like a reconstructed 3D volume like you might in a in a mo motion capture um, software. Um, we support all iPhones from 2018, and and there's not really hardware limitations to that. We just have to find every model of iOS device to characterize the parameters of the camera, and we've done that back to 2018. And as far as leveraging the uh, the improvements in cameras, we we are collecting the um, the videos at 1080p, and it's so it's not all the way at, at a 4K video quality. Um, and so there's there's trade-offs between uh, having a uh, a web-based application here with the amount of time it takes to upload the videos. So um, also the pose estimation models and and compute limitations kind of compute how high. Um, High resolution of videos you can use. So, so no, we aren't we aren't collecting in, in 4K or anything like that. But there's um, compute time and, and processing time benefits to that. Okay, great. And then a question from Matthias uh, Blandu. Uh, so, in total, you need iOS or three iOS or two iOS devices. Uh, will it be adapted for Android in the future? Um. So maybe on a long term, yes. The, the the short answer is like on the short term, probably not. Uh, it's as as Scott just mentioned, the the hard part there is to be able to compute all the parameters of the the cameras. So we did that for like uh, a series of iPads, iPods, and uh, iPhones. Um, if we had to support like Android, there are many more devices. So that would be a, a very big task on our end. Um, that's the first part of, of the, the answer. The second part is that our code is open source and um, it would be fairly straightforward for users to upload videos captured with other devices. It can be Android uh, phones or it can be like another GoPro, for instance. So we'll soon share utilities about how to do that on our uh, GitHub repository. Okay, 